The story starts with Geralt running, half naked, through a forest. Before he loses awareness, he can see figures running in his direction and actually screaming his name. Later, he finds himself in Kermoran, the stronghold of the Witcher School of the Wolf. All he can remember is the escape, but before his state can be examined by the Witchers and Triss Marigold who are in the castle, the castle gets attacked by a group of bandits and later mages. The group, known as Salamandra, successfully penetrates and steals the mutagen prescriptions used in the trial of grasses. After a brief reconstruction of the events that actually happened, Geralt, Eskel, Vesemir and Lambert decide with Triss that they want to split up and look for Salamandra leaders and reclaim the missing Witcher secrets. To add to the mix, one Witcher is still somewhere on the road, Berengar. His disappearance might be connected to the attack. The game takes place in 1270, but some controversials suggest that it is actually 1273. Either way, Geralt finds himself sometime after the attack on Kermoran on outskirts of Vizima, the capital city of Temeria. Soon after his arrival, it becomes obvious that the region is plagued by trouble. If that was not enough, Geralt finds traces of the people he actually seeks. Mixed up with politics of the common mob, he encounters Alvin, Shani and Zoltan Shive. The trail of Salamandra leads to Vizima, but before he can enter the city, he needs to deal with the problems of local people. Second chapter takes place in the city itself. Geralt struggles with lesser leaders of criminal and unexciting factions that are looking to use him to their own advantage. He's also trying to determine hints that can lead to Salamandra plot. In the investigation, Witcher is aided by a private detective, Raymond Marlowe. Many conflicting versions of the events of Chapter 2 exist. Some say that Geralt figured out that Azar Javed was playing Raymond. Others suggest that the Zerikanian mage was tricked in the end by the Witcher. In all versions, one thing is certain. Raymond sacrificed his own life so the Witcher can duel in the swamps of Vizima, the Zerikanian leader of Salamandra. During that time, Geralt also saw the rising tension between Yaven, the leader of the local Scoia'tael group, and the Order of the Flaming Rose, a powerful knighthood garrisoned in the city. The fight with Azar Javed has no clear winner. Geralt forced the mage to escape, but alone in the swamp he loses his conscience after the dreadful fight. Some days later he awakens in Triss' company, in her house in the central district of the city. Now the real game starts, the political game. Temeria is in political decay. King Foltus is away and his court in Vizima is under pressure between the Order of the Flaming Rose and racial tensions that are growing. On top of that, Salamandra is in the area, doing God knows what. Geralt messed the plans of the bandit group and forces Azar Javed to speed up his actions. So, what the ruling class is doing in such a dire time? They throw a party. Geralt meets Princess Abda, Foltus's daughter, makes contact with Talar, a spy master, Declan Lovarden, Roderick de Wet, and King Radovid V of Redania. All in all, investigation moves on. One is certain, without the support among the people higher in the class and in the city, Salamandra could not operate with such ease in Temeria as they are doing now. Geralt reveals that the protector of Azar Javed is no other than Princess Abda herself. Geralt, after a very difficult confrontation with Adda, is magically teleported by Triss to a nearby village. Triss wants him to be safe from Adda's wrath, and the place somehow draws the Witcher to itself. This chapter is less significant to the story, but makes for a nice change of pace in the game. Geralt's character deeply thinks about his state and where is he in his journey. Big help is provided by Lady of the Lake, a godlike spirit 
worshipped by the native villagers and Vodianoi. Among other characters in the village, Geralt finds Berengar, the missing witcher. Before the peace breaks, Berengar confesses that he was the one who betrayed the witcher school and aided Salamandra. Finally, a present Scoia'tael team under command of Toroviel Ep Shiel is forced by the Regiment of Order to start a fight. Whose side will Geralt take? After the showdown, Witcher returns to Vizima. The city is in the middle of non-human uprising. The districts are flooded with blood. Order troops are making a push to purge the city. Elves and dwarves are fighting the flaming rows. Inhabitants are actually turning into refugees, and Adda, well, she turned into a strigger. No one controls the city actually, not even the late to the party King Foltest who arrives in his own capital. Geralt takes a contract from the king to appease the city, to save the princess, find responsible and finally to find Azar Javed and whoever is controlling him, because at this point of the game it is obvious that he is not the mastermind behind this chaos. Geralt unmasks Roderick the Wet betrayal that led to Adda's transformation again, confronts Azar Javed in Old Castle and stops his mutants transformed by the stolen mutagens. And in the end, he moves to deal with the Grand Master of the Order of the Flaming Rose, Jacob the Aldersberg. Geralt moves to confront the antagonist and he wants to do that in the seat of the Order itself. The Aldersberg initiated the conflict between the Witchers and Salamandra to create an army of mutants that he believes he will lead into a very long winter that was foretold in the Italian prophecy. Geralt finds the Order leader, but he is not just a knight, he is also a powerful wizard. He casts a spell. Illusion forces Geralt into a vision of the winter that may or may not come. In the dream, he is haunted by the visions of spirits he met in the game and other characters. He also analyzes deeply his actions that were taken throughout chapter 1 to 5. Final confrontation ends with White Wolf's victory and the medallion that dead the Aldersberg holds in his hands. Some days later, there is the first failed attempt on King Foltest's life. Just a moment after, Geralt takes his payment for the biggest contract he ever had in his life. Saving a country, saving a city, saving a princess. And that's how Witcher 2007 concludes.